Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem, and we are in Foundry VTT, currently looking at the Fandelva and below. Um, but I wanted to pause what we're doing there to give you a little bit about tips on using walls, windows, proximity, etc. So in the previous video, we were setting up the Cragmore Castle Encounter, and it includes arrow slits. So all of these towers have arrow slits here. Now, if you... Um, have a situation like this, you could make a decision that your arrow sits are, are at ground level or they might be higher. So it might not be easy to look in them because let's face it, they're designed for looking out and firing out of, not necessarily for looking in. So they are going to have restricted amount of sight for them. So if I click on my walls icon here, we've got a couple of things that we can do. Um, this is how I've got my wall set up. If I wanted to, if we zoom right in here, this bit just here is actually the aperture to view out of. So what we could do is we could actually say that's how big the wall is for looking in. Um, so if you're outside here, you've really got to be lined up with it to actually be able to see anything in there. Uh, if I drag this over here and do that, we can see what that looks like. OK, so let's uh, let's grab Haley down here. Um, and so that's a, just a normal, I've left it as a normal wall, silly boy. Then we get rid of that. Okay, so we've got that gap in the wall there. So now when Haley's here, she can barely see anything through that gap because it's so small. But as soon as she gets in line with it, uh, she can indeed see through it. because it's. But it's only a small gap and suddenly she can't see again. So she really does have to be directly in front of it. Now, the problem is, if I was inside the room with this goblin, um, I'm also going to have, look how narrow that vision is there. Um, and you might decide that that's not going to, to work for you. Um, are you really going to have to be able to pace around the room to keep an eye on it? Realistically, perhaps. So that might not be the solution you want. But that is an option you could use. What I actually wanted to talk about in this video was, was not that. <laughs> but it's useful you've got options all right oops daisy you've got options and that's what's really useful can we can we stop please can we stop okay sometimes it just doesn't want to let go um right so what i'm going to do instead is what is wrong with this come on let go you can do it so what I want to do, in fact, is create a window here because just leaving a gap. Yeah, that might function in many ways. That might be what you want. Um, but I don't want my characters to potentially be able to move through the gap uh, and do all those kind of things. I might have restrictions to do with sound and other stuff I want to do. So I want to create this as a window instead. So if I double click on this, it's currently a normal wall which restricts movement. Do I want my window to restrict movement? Yes, characters can't get in and out there unless they polymorph into, um, into you know, a ferret or something like that. They can't get in there. Uh, do I want to restrict light? Well, I have some options to say limited or proximity, etc. But in this case, I don't want to limit light. I want to make sure that that works as, you know, it's only a small gap. Uh, what about sight restriction? Yes, I do want to limit sight, but I'll come back to that in a moment. Um, so light restriction is going to be none. Sound restriction is going to be none. I'm going to come back to sight at the moment. Um, well, I could I could put it for none for the moment. Um, and I don't want to be a door. OK, so I can do those things. But we have this option for proximity threshold attenuation. A bit of a mouthful. Um, and even the description is a bit of a mouthful. The distance that perception can penetrate this wall is adaptive relative to the observer's proximity and the activation threshold. Only applies when a threshold is defined. Whew, okay. <laughs> so if we've got no sight restriction, let's update this wall right now uh, and go back to Haley. What this means is, is as long as Haley is able to see that part of the wall she can see this particular goblin yeah because that's it's, it's a big enough gap she can see it but she can see him from quite a wide range here now the good thing is if she's inside that room 
again she can see quite a reasonable range especially let's get this chap out of the way uh, especially if she's right close to the window there she can see much more now she can move through because I'm the DM and I'm in control of her but obviously I've hidden that goblin over there get back over there um, but obviously the players wouldn't be able to move through that because it's got movement blocked so that all works good so what does this attenuation and thingy do so if I want sight to be restricted by proximity I can set what distance that is. Now I might want to set that for five feet, for example. I need to tick this proximity threshold thing. Okay, so I put that on as well. So that means sight is going to be limited if I am, you know, uh, limited unless I'm close to this. So let's update the wall and just show you what that looks like. So again, here's Haley. She can't see that goblin anymore because she's too far away. She needs to get within five feet of that window to be able to see him. So uh, it's a little bit tricky because of uh, where, the, the, where the grid is. But within five feet, she can now see through that window to be able to see that goblin. And it works the other way around as well. If I put Haley in the room here, even if... Excuse me, goblin. Uh, even if Haley's right up against here, can you see this little light bit here? There's just a little arc. That shows how far she can see outside of that window. So she cannot see that goblin all the way down there. So that's not quite how we want it, is it? Because we want the goblin to be able to see out further. So what we can do is we can turn this into a one-way wall. Uh, I always get this wrong, whichever way I try to do it. So this wall is now one way. What this means is Haley can see in if she's really, really close. But if she's inside, she can see out. So she can see all the way out there. No drama. That's acting like a normal window. But from the outside... Sorry, let me move my goblin back into the window there. From the outside, Haley can't see that goblin unless she gets right up close to the window. And that's really good to be able to say they have to come and really put their face through there. And that goblin's going to shoot her in the face with an arrow. Um... And that's a really nice way of doing it. Now, you might argue that five foot is a little bit too, um, you know, a bit too close, but that's okay. Just double click on this. I can just change that to 10 foot or 20 foot or whatever I want it to be. So from that point of view, Haley again, coming up here, we come up the steps, you know, um, we move around here. Um, everything looks fine. We can't see that guy unless we get close enough to the window. Now we can see him. Uh, so that's how I'm going to have these set up. So finally, just to go back over what those settings were, is we're using restricting movement. Normally restrict that movement, yes. I'm not restricting light. I'm setting my sight restriction to proximity. So I have to be within a certain distance to be able to see through that bit of wall, in inverted commas, that glass, that hole, whatever it is. This is set to 10 foot. I'm not restricting sound and I'm setting a wall direction so it only works one way. So this is how all of my arrow slits are going to be set up um, and I need to make sure I've got that um, prox old, proximity threshold attenuation on. Uh, I hope that's been useful. Just a little tip for you. Just adds a little bit of uh, extra dynamicism. Um, and of course it might be that your party is the ones on the inside and they want to use that to take advantage of. You can use it in all sorts of different places. Um, you know, corridors that are lined with effectively arrow slits. You might choose to use it for, um, let's say for example, another one you might want to do, even though... Uh, even though these doors are down, you might say, well, hang on, because of the height of this platform, anybody down here cannot see into those doors unless they were within 5, 10, 15 feet of these doors. So as soon as they're up here, they can see in. But when they're down here, they can't. You can use it for stuff like that. Um, use it to, you know, um, replicate, you know, mounds and hills and viewing over walls. You've got to be close enough to be able to see over it, that kind of stuff. Uh, and we could have used that with and tour, for example. Um, I hope that's been useful. Um, let me know if you use this, uh, if you don't use it, or if you've got ideas of where it could be used. Share it all in the comments because it helps everybody else kind of go, oh yeah, hang on a minute, yeah, I can use that in this place or that place. Thank you for watching, guys. You take care.